Majority of the supplements that are sold in the grocery store are complete marketing fat. They come in shiny bottles with health claims that are questionable and they entice buyers into believing that if you take those supplements, you're gonna feel like a better human being. People unfortunately are wasting an awful lot of money on supplements that they don't need and the ones that you could argue you do need, frankly, they're cheap. The supplement industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. There's no studies to recommend that these supplements are actually helpful. All we know is occasionally we get these Instagram models and influencers holding up these bottles saying, you should take this because I take it. So there's no research behind it. There is no standardization. And so you don't really know exactly what you're getting. Um, but to name a few, collagen, bone broth, um, protein powders, um, let's see, probiotics. We have had, uh, you know, the probiotic industry is a billion dollar industry and there's now evidence that probiotics could actually be harmful. So my suggestion is when it comes to supplements, be careful. It's not just expensive, it could be dangerous. If you stay up late at night and if you're looking at all these infomercials of how, you know, this blue jellyfish supplement is going to expand your brain and you're going to be a genius tomorrow if you start eating it, there is no data to that. There's really There's no support. I think that the supplement industry is a thriving industry because it's another pill for an ill approach, short term band aid approach and an approach that appeals to a lot of people because they love um, a quick fix solution. It's amazing to me that we never learned from the snake oil salesman. I mean, collagen powders, ridiculous. The idea that you're gonna eat a collagen powder, it's gonna get broken up by digestion, come together as collagen in your face. It's completely nonsense. There's so many, and you know, some of them we have, you know, placebo controlled trials with and a lot of patients take biotin for their hair and nails there's placebo controlled trials saying it's no different than placebo i don't know people are more interested in marketing than they are in uh, or anecdotal you know there's all these like um uh, the, the the your your best friend now selling supplements and your best friend swears that their the hair got blown vomitous with their supplement it's just ridiculous the supplement industry is is unregulated and unfortunately i think buyers are convinced over and over and over and over again to purchase shiny objects that don't actually do anything. And they're not addressing the root cause of problems in the first place. So people are thinking that they're just going to take this magic pill. It's not going to work. You have to address the cause of whatever health struggle a person has experienced. We know uh, from certain vitamins, just because you take it as a single nutrient, so it's out of context of food, can sometimes promote disease there might be a risk in taking vitamins if you don't need them. Some people spend hundreds of pounds on all sorts of pills and it's mostly expensive pee. Um, having said that, I think some people do benefit from a nutritional analysis and um, having a look at their diet to make sure that they're getting all they need from um, the foods that they're eating. And so in terms of supplements or vitamins or minerals that are have not been shown to be efficacious um, to, to the population at large, what I would say is the fact that they're Studies have not really reported a strong benefit of multivitamins across the board and all the various supplements for altering disease states. So it's not something I recommend unless someone is not eating a diverse food array. There's a lot of bad advice when it comes to supplements. First, there are people who want to sell you the whole drugstore worth of things. Uh, so you've got to take this and that and all, and all kinds of supplements, which you really don't need. You need vitamin B12. If you're not getting sun, you might need vitamin D, but that's about it. The supplement industry is massive and there are so many supplements um, that are being promoted that people generally don't need to take on a regular basis. Some important considerations, however, would be to make sure that you're getting an adequate source of iodine in your diet either through sea vegetables or through a supplement. Um, and then there are some supplements that can be helpful for patients with certain conditions like um, you know, curcumin or turmeric-based supplements can be helpful in pain relief uh, or for people fighting certain diseases. Um, but generally, if we look at the breadth of the supplements, and I've actually had patients come see me 
um, and they, I ask them to bring their supplements and they bring a roller bag, uh, carry-on bag full of supplements or two garbage bags full of supplements and they're spending thousands of dollars a month on supplements. And they'll ask me, they say, Dr. Stoll, what supplement should I take? And I say, you know what, let's just zip that up and I'm gonna tell you what to eat first and then we'll determine if you need any supplements secondary. So I generally recommend people start with food. Start with the healthiest living food that you can consume. Make sure you're covering yourself for any significant deficiencies. And then, you know, there are a few supplements that can be um, individual specific or disease specific that can be, um, you know, added on. But, you know, the, the real source of health and vitality and restoration comes from food first.